The Neon War, Part 3, The Legacy of the Sword. A century had passed since the beginning of the Hundred Years' War. The struggle for control over Earth's neon energy, the lifeblood of a dying planet, had spanned generations. It was a war that began long before Kamau's time, dating back to the era of his great-grandfather, the first neon sword holder. Kamau's great-grandfather, Sefu, had been the first to wield the legendary laser sword during the initial outbreak of conflict. When the planet's neon veins were discovered to be a nearly infinite power source, governments and corporations across the globe had rushed to harness it. The war that followed tore nations apart, leading to the formation of the First Order, an elite group of warriors sworn to protect the balance of the world. Sefu had led them, his mastery of the sword unparalleled. But the war's cost had been immense, and Sefu's own death marked the beginning of the Order's decline. Now, a century later, Kamau stood in the shadow of that legacy. The battle to protect Earth had shifted into a new phase, but the stakes remained just as high. Kamau and Akila had become legends in their own right uniting the last remnants of the Resistance and pushing back the forces of the New Order. After defeating Darius and the New Order's attempt to exploit the planet's neon energy, Kamau had reluctantly accepted his role as a leader, while Akila had become his steadfast partner, both in battle and in life. Together, they had brought hope to a world on the edge of collapse. Years had passed and Kamau and Akila's son, Jamil, had grown into a warrior in his own right. Trained in the ways of the ninja and the laser sword by Kamau himself, Jalil had inherited his father's skills and his mother's fierce will. But the burden of his family's legacy weighed heavily on his young shoulders. One stormy night, as Kamau's forces were regrouping in the remnants of an ancient city, a familiar presence emerged from the shadows, Darius. <laughs> Though Kamau had defeated him years ago, Darius had survived, his cybernetic enhancements keeping him alive even as his body deteriorated. His face was a twisted version of its former self, scarred and half-machine, but his eyes burned with the same bitterness. I told you this war wasn't over, Kamau, Darius sneered, his voice crackling through his metallic enhancements. It never ends. Kamau gripped his laser sword, ready for another battle. But Darius raised his hand, signaling for peace. I didn't come to fight you, Darius said, his tone laced with exhaustion. I came to tell you the truth. Kamau hesitated, but listened. He had always wondered why Darius, once his closest friend and brother-in-arms, had betrayed him. Darius's fall from the ideals of the First Order was a wound that had never truly healed. Do you remember the training disaster? Darius began, his voice heavy with emotion. The one that nearly killed me, left me like this. Kamau nodded, the memory still fresh. It had been during their early days of training in the First Order. A mission had gone terribly wrong. Darius had been caught in an explosion, his body broken beyond repair. The Order had tried to save him with cybernetic enhancements, but the process had changed him, physically and mentally. You left me, Darius said, his eyes narrowing. You abandoned the First Order when they needed you most. When I needed you most, Kamau's eyes hardened. I didn't abandon you. I left because the Order had lost its way. They stopped protecting the world and started using their power for control. Darius scoffed. And yet here we are, still fighting over that same power. The neon veins, the sword, it never ends. Darius's bitterness, though sharp, was not without truth. Kamau realized that the neon energy, the very thing they had sworn to protect, had poisoned not just their enemies, but their own order as well. The First Order had fractured under the weight of its responsibility, and now the New Order had risen from its ashes, more ruthless than ever. But before Kamau could respond, Jalil stepped forward, his hand on the hilt of his own sword. You talk of betrayal and blame, 
But all you've ever done is feed into the New Order's greed, he said coldly. This war won't end until you're gone, Darius. A grim smile crossed Darius's face. Perhaps you're right, young one, but it's not me you should fear. With that cryptic warning, Darius lunged at Kamau once more. The battle was swift and brutal, but this time Kamau fought not as a vengeful warrior, but as a man who had accepted his place in the world's history. Darius, weakened by his enhancements and the years of war, was no match for Kamau's skill and determination. With a final strike, Kamau disarmed him, the fight finally coming to an end. Darius collapsed to the ground, defeated once more. I fought for a world that could never be saved, he gasped. But you, you'll see. The New Order, they have bigger plans than just Earth. With that, Darius breathed his last, the conflict between him and Kamau, ending with a final broken sigh. As Kamau stood over Darius's lifeless body, Jahlil approached, his expression somber. What did he mean about the New Order? Kamau didn't have the answer, but soon they would find out. The very next day, while sifting through data from the New Order's Central Command, Akila uncovered something terrifying. The New Order had been planning for years to leave Earth behind. Their greed and exploitation of the Neon Veins had never been about long-term survival. Earth was a doomed planet, and the New Order knew it. Their true plan was far more sinister. They're building a colony on Mars, Akila said, her voice barely containing her fury. They plan to strip Earth bare and escape to Mars, leaving the rest of humanity to die. Kamau's fists tightened. He had fought so hard to protect this world, but the New Order's ambition stretched far beyond anything he had imagined. And now, with Earth on the brink of collapse, the New Order's leaders were preparing to leave the planet they had ravaged. Jalil's eyes hardened. Then we take the fight to them. Kamau looked at his son, the pride in his heart undeniable. Jalil had grown into a man ready to carry on the mantle, a warrior who could finish what Kamau and his ancestors had started. You'll need to infiltrate their ranks, Kamau said, his voice steady. We need to know how far their plans have gone and how to stop them before they can leave. Jalil nodded, the weight of the task already clear in his mind. I won't fail. As Jalil infiltrated the New Order, learning of their plans to establish a massive colony on Mars, a new figure emerged, a villain more dangerous than Darius, a shadowy leader known only as the Architect. The Architect had orchestrated the Mars colonization plan, seeing Earth as nothing more than a stepping stone on humanity's path to cosmic domination. Jalil, now deep within the ranks of the New Order, learned that the Architect was preparing to launch the final phase of their plan, leaving Earth forever in a blaze of destruction, ensuring that no resistance could follow them to Mars. But Jalil, armed with his father's teachings and the knowledge of his great-grandfather's legacy, knew that the war for Earth wasn't over yet. The Neon War had raged for 100 years, but it would not end with the destruction of the planet. Not if he could stop it. Now, with the fate of Earth and humanity hanging in the balance, Jahlil prepared for the ultimate battle. The battle to stop the Architect, destroy the New Order's plans, and ensure that the future of Earth, Mars, and beyond would not be one of destruction, but of hope. The Neon Sword, passed through generations, was now in his hands, and the war would end with him.